my kingdom is back in kvk we're doing king of the nile so today i figured i would share with you guys my top five armies right now for my account because it's been a couple of months since i did an account overview here and i'm sure a lot of you guys are curious to know the sort of progress that i've been making what's going on guys cheers so not only are we going to go over commander pairs i'm also going to show you guys the equipments for these commanders as well as their talent builds and we're also going to go over all of the armaments that i have for these armies so make sure you stay tuned so without further further ado let's just jump right into the first pairing and that is none other than Guan with Sargon now on the previous episode of this series I did not have Sargon expertise obviously I do now and I think that this overall is a very well-rounded build Guan has a nice strong AoE he has a really powerful debuff he has a ton of attack and if you look at Sargon he has a really high single target damage he has a ton of other defensive stats like health like defense plus his own debuff is applied in AoE fashion because of Guan Yu he also has a shield and some other really nice things here the synergy between these two is really nice because when Guan gains a shield his expertise does give him a 15 percent skill damage increase for three seconds which is great again I think this is one of the most well-rounded infantry pairs in the entire game is this the best pair for Guan Yu no is this the best pair for Sargon no but I think that more so has to do with the fact that both of these commanders kind of would rather be paired with CPO and that's more so to do with just how good CPO himself is which isn't really a comment on this pair in particular CPO is just so far ahead of everything obviously my Guan Yu is the primary here that's always going to be the case with Guan Yu and the talent build for this guy has not changed since the last video also as a side note please forgive the amount of forts that are going to pop up at the top here because it's just it's past glory event okay so you're just going to see a bunch of forts but anyway I came up here grabbed rejuvenate for the rage cycle here we grabbed clarity this is going to apply for Sargon as secondary which is huge we also grab buckler shield to reduce the counter attack damage that we take we came up here too strong a body for extra infantry health which is very important we grabbed hold the line here which is really nice to reduce the damage that you take I also grabbed one percent of troop health at this point I might consider grabbing the March speed instead although you do grab the March speed here anyway so it's like not really a big deal like this gets you six percent of March speed for three points this gets you six percent of March speed for two points but I could always get just an extra two percent March speed in exchange for one percent health Gawan is kind of feeling pretty slow lately but uh I think this is what I'm going to stick with for now and if he's just unbearably slow maybe I'll change that in the future but this is what we're working with now let's take a look at the equipment here I actually don't think the equipment on Guan has changed but if we take a look here we have obviously the golden helmet here for the troop defense we have a talented hope cloak on the chest piece here which gives you a staggering 16 percent defense plus I have the uh iconic crystal in there which is great you can see I also have the iconic crystal in my hammer of sun and moon 25 percent infantry attack is huge this is the best in slot infantry weapon in my opinion you don't get the set bonus for this but I wasn't going for the set bonus on this anyway I did grab the eternal knight this may have changed since last time uh the eternal knight is is very similar in performance to the talented Karox humility which is the purple legs that give you troop health this gives you more troop defense health is obviously uh superior and the only reason that I actually did get the eternal light for Guan is because eventually you're going to want to put an iconic crystal in here and you're also going to want to get a talent here and then it is better than purple legs so moving forward this will be better right now this is you know it, it might as well be purple legs with a talent it's basically effectively the same it's just again I'm working towards something in the future and I was really hoping to get a talent here if I got lucky with that that would have been sick we have the golden gloves obviously I'm still missing some iconic crystals on this set here uh we have the sturdy boots of the eternal empire and then we have the ring of doom and the horn of fury so bonus damage bonus rage uh we just we love that that's perfect for Guan that's pretty much everything that he does taking a look at his armaments this is what you guys might be most interested in because this may have changed quite a bit from last time I don't recall but we have a total of 18.2 percent infantry stats here which is huge plus there's half a percent of all damage and two percent March speed so overall this is really really nice I'm really happy with what we have here on these armaments could it be better absolutely have I spent a lot of money on armaments absolutely not I hate the armament system it's been in the game for so long and it's still absolutely it's horrible it's horrible they've done nothing about it to make it better effectively it's just as bad as the day that it came in so I haven't been spending money on it but this is the best that I've got for my Guan Yu you could see 5.9 percent attack 4.7 percent defense and 5.1 percent health plus two and a half percent health 
on the vitality here so really I have more health than anything which I think is really good I really like the distribution of the stats here uh, I think it's pretty even with health being the highest I think that's that's just a plus obviously I would love some more uh inscriptions that do more things like bonus skill damage or, or whatever but you know it, it is what it is obviously uh we got wedge formation pretty much for everything here in this video uh but again can't complain about Guan Yu's armaments I am pretty happy with them for the amount that I have spent on them it's very little moving on to my second commander pairing here and that is none other than CPO Prime Expertise with a 5515 Tarek I have not gone through an Expertise Tarek uh, I think the single target damage on him even without out expertise is absolutely insane I mean it's a lot of damage man it's 2500 damage factor if you're surrounded otherwise it's 2200 vanilla I mean it's it's good I think it's good where it is I don't really want to spend the sculptures to expertise him it's like 300 something sculptures I just don't want to do it that's expensive maybe one day I will go ahead and do it if I really want to leave Tarek in my build in my lineup but for right now I think this is totally fine we do have CPO primary as the support tree is in my opinion better than the defense tree for this specific build but overall again is this the best pair for CPO no is this the best pair for Tarek maybe you could make that uh, argument I guess it depends on what you're doing but again as a pair for each other they are very very good now let me just explain that really quick because I used the same line of logic for my Guan Yu with Sargon saying that they're not the best pair for each other but they're a great pair in general and I'm using the same logic here as well because again you could do Guan Scipio with Sargon Tarek that's a very good two commander pair and you may make the argument that that is the best pair for each of them but when you're thinking about your five armies as an open field formula right you're really looking to build the best formula and each army is a piece to that puzzle so while you may be sacrificing a little bit for each individual army's effectiveness in total as a five army build you effectively have a better five army build so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense to you guys but again it's just very well rounded so similar to Guan CPU has a very powerful AoE with debuff he also gives you a ton of infantry attack he also has a shield uh health some damage factor really love that stuff here 10 percent more skill damage and when the target is silenced the rage grows 30 percent faster the key to this is that uh CPO's army does not have to silence them so for example if your Guan Yu is in a separate army which in the case of, for me that is the case uh if he silences a target and CPO is hitting him that target is still silenced so you don't have to pair Guan and CPO together to get this bonus as long as they are hitting the same target which typically they will be and so you gain that bonus 30 percent rage either way just by having Guan in the lineup and similarly to uh, to Sargon Tarek is dealing a ton of single target damage factor here plus he has a ton of infantry attack he gives you a little bit of March speed outside of territory which is nice he also gives you 15 percent bonus damage and a 10 percent chance to reduce the enemy's rage by an absolute ton which is a really powerful debuff on Tarek uh he's really just a generic stat stick slash glass cannon that's kind of what we're looking at here with Tarek uh very very nice stuff here he's for having the defense tree he is surprisingly fragile but thankfully uh CPO isn't that fragile so again it makes a really good pairing really good synergy for one another one of them's doing AOE one of them's doing single target no matter what you're dealing a bunch of damage to a bunch of people if we look at the talent build on my CPO you can see that I grabbed rejuvenate this is why CPO is, is essentially the primary commander here this this specific talent like this is the reason why 150 rage for every skill is just ridiculous that's a ton of rage regeneration loose formation is a must reducing the skill damage that you take again the secondary here is a glass cannon pretty much and then we go all in on the infantry tree I mean you really kind of have no other choice like you get you grab the March speed because you need it you obviously go all the way up to elite soldiers you gain a ton of stats here the defense and the health off to the sides which is nice health over here on strong of body the extra March speed and then we also get snare of thorns this is kind of just a bonus you have to get this on the way to the top but reducing the targets March speed is really nice it's going to keep you you know staying connected to them and hopefully it helps your Guan Yu with Sargon stay connected as well because Sargon deals damage over time and you want that target to be slowed so this is really good overall this is kind of like the only talent build that you can even consider for CPO obviously you could consider going all the way up to Cage of Thorns if you, what you really wanted was a snare march but I don't think it's really worth it the purpose of this army is not to do the snare and slow down it's to just deal a bunch of damage so that's what we went with taking a look at the equipment this has probably changed maybe only slightly but it's definitely changed in the uh accessory slot here because we have the ring of doom 
and we have the horn of fury i believe that i had one of the purple uh, accessories in the last video so we did pretty much complete the accessories You're, i'm never going to change these effectively uh for my cpo this is the same thing that we saw on my guan it's it's just a really really good basically the meta pairing for open field at least uh just all a ton of damage ton of rage that's what you want we have again the gold helmet and the gold gloves here for the two piece set bonus of three percent extra defense we also have a talented hope cloak i got really lucky with both of these and we get the uh, iconic crystal in there as well we also have the iconic crystal in the eternal night legs here you can see i've made a lot of progress on here even though it looks like i haven't uh i am one refine away from getting the talent on here which is going to be very very nice uh to get a little bit more tankiness here on my cpo I got really unlucky literally this is three different refines so I've gotten super unlucky with this uh but it is what it is so I'm gonna have this probably by the end of KVK this will be this will have the iconic or the the talent should I say uh and that's gonna be nice because it's gonna essentially be another hope cloak right you're gonna get another 16 percent of infantry defense and then I actually went with the Sakura Fubuki here I know that may be a little bit controversial but I have the Sakura Fubuki so I might as well use it and it either is gonna go on this army or my third army my third infantry army that's a little bit of a spoiler for you guys and it just feels more appropriate on CPO because again yes infantry attack is the least valuable stat for infantry but it doesn't do nothing and I think that's what's very important for people to remember it doesn't do nothing you do get diminishing returns the more attack that you have of course really what it's doing the more attack you have the more damage you're dealing and that's really what you want from CPO Tark you want to just deal mad damage that's what you want all the damage that's possible that's what you want uh and it's just again it makes more sense on this army than it does for my other army so that's what we went with should I dismantle it for a blue shield maybe I should I don't really know but I think overall uh it's it's fine if I see that it's performing really bad I will get rid of it later and then we could take a look at the armaments here so a total of 13.1 percent of stats here so significantly less stats than I have on my Guan Yu however there is a little bit more of the all damage so we have a 0.7 percent all damage then we also have eclipse here so I take 2.5 percent less skill damage and resistant deals 2.5 percent extra counter attack damage I think that's a really nice combo here a little bit of tankiness a little bit more punishing if the enemy does try to swarm me down so we love that and again also wedge formation I'm not as happy with the stat breakdown of the stats here as opposed to my Guan you could see a lot of the stats are infantry attack which again I do not need from this I have a ton of infantry attack for both the commander the primary and the secondary they both give 40 percent so the fact that I have so much infantry attack here kind of stinks it doesn't you know it doesn't really make that much sense especially because Sakura Fubuki but again uh based on what you'll see from my next army or my third infantry army it will make a little bit more sense as to what's going on here but overall I think this is a solid uh armament configuration again especially because I don't buy the bundles for this I bought a few bundles but really nothing compared to the whales so yeah I think this is fine now I'm actually going to talk about my third infantry army later in the video so if you're interested in that stay tuned but I think this is a little bit more interesting let's talk about my third army being my cavalry army which is Nevsky with Joan of Arc Prime so this is definitely a big change from my previous video I did actually remove my William and I put in Joan of Arc Prime I did finally expertise her it was a very large investment and it was a very drawn out time period i resisted investing in her for so long but i had over 1500 universal legendary commander sculptures and we were going into this kvk and i thought if there's one commander that i could invest in that would really make a difference even if it's a small difference it would be joan of arc prime and that's what i what i went ahead and did i don't really think that this pair needs that much explanation even as an infantry main you probably should have this pair because it's so good and you're going to notice a trend here with the previous two pairs we've talked about but Nevsky crazy single target damage factor with a really powerful debuff Joan of Arc Prime crazy powerful AoE that is basically the trend for everything here however instead of a debuff on Joan it is a damage buff and a rage buff which is really really nice and very unique great for this synergy with the other builds or with the other commanders that I'm using here Nevsky also just a stat stick just a ton of stats here we have attack 
we have health we have defense uh we have uh, sorry defense here skill damage here and then we also have an extra little bit of normal attack and health on the expertise just a ton of stuff that we absolutely love the skill damage obviously is incredible for Joan of Arc too so super super good stuff here and especially because Joan is the secondary essentially Nevsky pops his active skill which triggers Knight of Iron which gives you a total of 60 percent skill damage for Joan of Arc's AoE when she pops off on that second turn and I actually haven't tested to see if her uh double AoE falls within that same 60 percent period I don't know if it does it, either way the fact that it works for the first one is absolutely nuts in and of itself so the synergy here is great Joan also gives a bunch of attack normal attack damage some March speed some cav damage more normal attack damage a little bit of cavalry health which is nice uh we didn't see this from William but he did have a little bit more defense so it's a little bit of a trade-off off there plus we see some counter-attack damage stuff here as well so overall she's pretty fragile obviously you do have the health but mostly pretty fragile she's just here for massive aoe damage and a little bit of buff on the uh, active skill which is great we take a look at the equipment i don't think anything here has changed to be honest with you guys i haven't used any more iconic crystals on my cavalry march i've been focusing mainly on infantry for now i do wish i could focus a little bit more on cavalry but i just don't have the materials and blueprints to do so i i'm not a whale in this game so there's not that much i can do but we have the gold helmet chest and gloves as well as the boots so we do actually have the two piece set bonus for the bonus health here which is nice and we have the heart of the saint i probably will never get rid of this because I'm not a, a cavalry player and this is just so good like I'm probably going to keep that forever gladiator I would love the uh, you know ash of the dawn for the legs but again it's unless I get the talent in it on it and get lucky there's really no reason to do that I think the accessories need the most amount of work here but again I'm not a cavalry main so all my best stuff is on my infantry however I will say that the Mora's web I think is it meta no it's definitely not meta but I do like it because effectively what I'm doing here is of course I'm lowering their defense which is great but by putting this on my cavalry um I'm able to slow down other cavalry which is important for my infantry to actually catch up to will that make the difference maybe sometimes but having it on Nevsky is the best option for me and I have it so I might as well use it also we have the talented silent trial here a lot of whales sleep on silent trial it's actually really good I like this a lot and uh you know eventually I will replace it with a legendary but for right now this is what we got taking a look at the armaments over here I'm actually really happy with armaments on Nevsky because he has 17.4 percent of bonus cavalry stats really good stuff there obviously no all damage which is a bummer but if we take a look here well clad three and a half percent of defense really good stuff if we look at brawler 1.5 percent extra skill damage which we're going to be dealing tons of skill damage uh with the aoe and with nevsky as well love that then we have militant you deal one percent extra normal attack damage just generally good just generally good you're going to be dealing more damage every single turn with that so i like it i wish i had some march speed or all damage here so that is a bummer but in general very well rounded as far as the stat breakdown goes and obviously you know if you take a look at the equipment here we have 37 percent cav health 28 percent defense and no cavalry attack right so the fact that if we take a look at my armaments you could see obviously a nice even breakdown here but the four and a half percent 4.7 percent cav attack is useful it's it's fine yes I'd rather it be in health or defense or something but overall well-rounded I like it I did forget to talk about my talent build so let's take a look at that really quickly here I actually went all the way up to rally and cry this may be controversial I know a lot of people People love feral nature it's kind of like you either love feral nature or you hate feral nature I tend to avoid feral nature I don't know if that is the right play but I typically tend to avoid it I don't I don't really think it moves the needle that much but you could also make the same argument for rally and cry so I mean again it is what it is at least you'll get that 15 percent all damage for uh Nevsky's first uh, skill shot so that's pretty cool we obviously grab rejuvenate that's very important we grab tactical mastery and we grab heraldic shield as well obviously versatility tree sucks so we've got nothing over there and we basically put everything else into the cav tree so we grabbed the undying fury obviously this is a must optional here was equestrian excellence 10 percent chance to increase march speed it's good for keeping up with people but really i just had nowhere else to put this i did put one percent of cav health here as well i probably could have put this here to gain 10 percent i don't really have anywhere else to put that stuff unfortunately um i did put two points in cav health over here well this is all health but 
for us it's cavalry and yeah could I put these two points here I guess maybe I should maybe that is what's best but at the end of the day that's a super micro optimization I don't think that that's going to make a big difference because again this is only a 10 percent chance and you also have to be hitting them so this is only good for you know if someone's trying to run away you can keep up with them maybe if you if you're lucky right so yeah and it's only for two seconds I think in general I'd rather take the health but I see I could see an argument for that moving on to my fourth army we have Boudica with YSG and I think this is the army that you know my armaments have changed but in general not much else has changed with this army since my previous video however with the new Archer commanders coming out in the game I suspect we'll be replacing YSG I feel like that is going to be the case here Zhu Liang is expected to be very good in rise of kingdoms based on what people are expecting him to look like when he comes into the game obviously I've not covered any of that on the channel at the time of me recording this video because I've been straying away from leaks lately but he will probably take YSG slot as soon as I expertise him so keep that in mind but Boudica is a really good piece of the murder ball puzzle as you can see we're building here so far her active skill makes the target take 35 percent increased damage for three seconds and slows them for by 30 percent so as an infantry player she is essentially a must-have I basically need Boudica in my lineup because I have to stay on a target and this 30 percent slowdown is very good there are better commanders to deal slowdown but the fact that you also gain the skill damage debuff as well is just insane plus her single target damage is through the roof and again just like the rest of the video you see massive single target with debuff massive aoe that is like the meta at least that's what i'm going for with my five armies here so Boudica primary is the way to go obviously you gain a ton of stats here on Boudica as well 30 percent attack and 30 percent defense under 80 percent plus 10 percent march speed which ysg definitely needs desperately here we have 25 percent less skill damage taken very good for ysg as well five percent more damage to infantry is fine a little bit of healing factor and of course the expertise is is great 10 percent ar archer damage and 80 percent chance to remove uh silence and other control effects which is amazing taking a look at her talent build uh we have obviously rejuvenate is great we also went all the way up to uh clarity over here which typically if i go here it it's it's a lot of points to get here okay but remember the skill damage bonus here is going to be for YSG which is five target AOE massive AOE very good stuff clarity is is really nice and because I went all the way up to clarity I didn't have enough points to finish whistling arrows which is a bummer but it's still good right it's still good I'm getting more than half of the value out of whistling arrows so it's a 10 percent chance for 15 percent all damage for two seconds it's a small buff it's a small chance of occurring I wish I could go all the way in on here but I would have to take away points from either razor sharp or from clarity or from rejuvenate so it's like which of the I mean those are all so good do I really want to do that probably not right probably not but we do grab venomous sting on the way here which is eight percent skill damage for YSG which is amazing again razor sharp more rage which is great and overall this is how I have her built now this you could definitely make the argument that I might as well just go all the way up to feral nature at this point because I'm already so invested in the skill tree but I would need 10 points I would have to take 10 points out of the archer tree to do that which means I completely lose this buff I also completely lose the bonus damage from Phoenix tail arrows so yeah like I, I I don't know maybe maybe I should change this but I think this is a pretty well-rounded build it gets you most of what you want from the skill tree and pretty much everything else is in the archer tree taking a look at the equipment uh this is a very budget build because I am not an archer player so uh we have the purple helmets and legs because it gives me the three percent attack for the bonus uh you know the, the set bonus there which is fine revival revival set is great for budget builds for archers it's unique to archers so I might as well use it uh golden age here on the weapon is a no-brainer and I got super lucky with the chest and the gloves here so I got the talent on the dragon's breath plates this was during a live stream I also got these talent on the gloves during that same live stream so that was an epic a some would say a legendary live stream for the Omniarch uh, account but we got the two uh point stat bonus here which is great obviously I put iconic crystals in these because I'm going to be using these two for the rest of the game I also have my dagger over here on Boudica because this is just a nice debuff to the target and I have nowhere else to put it so I figured I would put it here and then of course we have Delane's amulet because in general this is a very squishy march so I 
have an extra accessory slot might as well make it a little bit tanky i'm pretty close to getting the uh, talent on here but i'm not really worried about this honestly i'm more so worried about just getting a legendary in the slot but for right now this is fine and then of course we have the flame treads which is just bonus health which i think in overall is just good taking a look at the armaments you will find 16.6 percent of stats as well as 1.1 percent all damage which is pretty nice here we have 4.2 percent archer attack 5.4 percent archer defense and 4.5 percent archer health again very well rounded here which is nice and 2.5 percent of defense on armored here so i love to see that the 1.1 percent all damage i think is i mean that's the best all damage i've had all video so i will take it unfortunately no march speed or anything here but we just went all in on raw stats which i think is great and of course again wedge formation that's all you're ever going to see here in my five army builds and my final army here is actually still herald with alex now this is the army that i think is the least effective out of all of my armies but it does a couple of important things the first is it gets my alex in the fields right because alex is for no matter how you know no matter what you think about alex the debuff on his active skill is exceptionally good especially considering all the other powerful commanders that are in my five army lineup plus he gives out shields which means if one of these shields goes to my Guan Yu, then Guan Yu gains bonus skill damage which means sargon also gains bonus skill damage which is nice so there's some synergy there as well and remember alexander the great is getting a relic relatively soon it's going to give him 10 percent extra infantry defense and reduce the normal attack damage you take by three percent and that's really important for my herald so for this kvk most likely we're not going to see that relic i don't know what it, i don't know when lilith is going to release these season two relics obviously we already have khan and we already have saladin here they just dropped these they didn't tell anybody they just put them in the game so i don't know what criteria they're using for releasing these but hopefully we get alex's in the game soon because herald definitely needs that of course Harold is not really aging that well. I mean, I still think he's great for dealing damage. If he's surrounded, he does circular AOE. Plus, after using his skill, he gains 20% increased damage, which he's going to be doing that a lot. So overall, tons of damage on this commander. A ridiculous amount of attack. Literally the highest amount of infantry attack in the entire game if you let this stack up to 15 times, which for longer fights that will be the case and you have a 20 percent chance to cast his active skill again which just is incredible plus he deals a ton of counterattack damage so if he does get swarmed then that is great uh one thing that i've noticed over the past few months is that Harold is typically left alone which is fine with me because that means my alex is left alone which means he's going to continue to support the rest of my armies while he's just chilling hiding behind my herald you don't see that many heralds in the open field these days because in general all herald does is kind of a lot of damage and he doesn't really i mean he doesn't do any like debuffs or anything he buffs himself uh, he has a little bit of march speed i guess but he's just damaged right and this damage factor is kind of getting power crept out at this point obviously 1500 circular aoe is nice but that's again only if he swarmed and there's just no reason for people to swarm him people don't really want to hit him he hurts a little bit right if you hit him and it only makes him stronger plus he has counterattack damage so I don't know I think Harold's I'm really struggling to find a use for him right now uh, right now it's just I want my Alex in the field and based on the other investments that I have this seems like the best third infantry army that I can do right now I have considered going all in on actually Trajan believe it or not of all commanders uh despite how old Trajan is he's a great use for my Herald but if I do that then I'm getting rid of my Alex so it's kind of a trade-off and it doesn't solve the problem of Herald being power crept out it sort of just gives him a slightly better commander to be paired with so yeah I don't know really this is it's kind of a bummer we're in a weird spot right now as infantry mains because I just what else am I gonna pair him with right if I wanted more tankiness I could go for Martell but that removes the that's like removing the point right the point of this army is to keep Alex in the field to be supportive so I'm gonna mess around with this army I'm gonna use this army the least out of all the armies that I've shown in this video effectively if I have troops the first four armies I will pretty much always open field with uh, at least that's my plan for this KBK I will always have four armies in the field unless obviously I'm in a garrison or a rally this fifth army will be there if the field presence is needed it's not a bad army but it's definitely 
definitely the one that is the most outdated in my opinion with that being said let's take a look at the talents here so you guys have an idea um I went all in on the skill tree here for Harold uh the reason for this is because you really just want the fastest rage cycle you want to get those the 20 percent bonus damage there you just want to pop active skills that's what you want from Harold just pop the active skill over and over again and, and it is what it is now is this the best talent build for Harold um probably not it would probably be a little bit more well-rounded to go all the way in on the infantry tree and try to grab buckler shield now that I think about it especially because clarity I mean this is good if you pop Harold's active skill again during the next six seconds which is possible but there is no bonus there's really no skill damage on Alex let's be real he has this second skill but it, it is what it is at the end of the day I decided to grab hold the line we grabbed the extra defense we grabbed strong of body and we came up here to grab a little bit of March speed. And again, you know, you might be able to make the case by saying, Hey, on the get rid of feral nature, grab just a bunch of this March speed over here and try to be fast in the open field. You, you could do that. But again, I think Harold, if you're using Harold, you may even be cheeseburgering with him. And if that's the case, you definitely went feral nature. So that was kind of the logic with going all the way in the skill tree here, despite not doing this strategy for any other army in this video that has the skill tree. You will notice though, that this commander pairing does still follow the same rule of thumb for every pair and that is circular aoe and alex has a little bit of single target damage and a debuff so similar strategy as every other army it's just in it's just weaker because the circular aoe is only if surrounded which is rare but whatever taking a look at the equipment this is also probably the worst equipment i have uh again we did grab eternal light here this may have been a change from the previous video this was under the assumption and i was really going in on a third infantry march which I have backtracked from I don't think a third infantry march is really great for pretty much anybody at this point as late game meta there just aren't three infantry armies that are worth running at this point so that's a bummer hopefully that changes in the future and I'll have good infantry equipment I'll have a good head start on building that set but I I crafted this because I was hoping to get a talent that's really what it was and I didn't so it is what it is we have no talents or iconic crystals anywhere here because you know iconic crystals are expensive and I'm not going to waste them on basically my, my worst March but overall this is still solid equipment for basically a backup March um we grabbed the uh, helmet and gloves again so we can get the true bonus over here extra defense we have hope cloak the only non-talented hope cloak that I have no iconic crystal either we have shows a turn because I crafted this a long time ago and if any of my armies need extra defense it's my Herald he's very squishy and Alex doesn't really help with that uh that's also why we have gatekeeper shield and remember earlier I said gatekeeper shield on CPO do I need it or not you know I decided to put it on Herald so that way he's a little bit more tanky instead of having the soccer of Fubuki here I, I have a second shield if I really wanted to do that I can move my soccer to my Richard if if I really thought the shield is best for both but we'll see how it goes as the KVK progresses I also have ancient stratagems because troop capacity is important and why not right also it has the infantry talent so might as well and silent trial with infantry talent so I'm at least doing a little bit of debuffing here with this March I think that's great finally looking at the armaments probably the worst armaments out of all my armies this is 10 and a half percent of infantry stats with the majority of it being infantry attack definitely not what you want uh, I shouldn't say majority it's not technically the majority but it's the highest of the three and so yeah not loving that 0.6 percent all damage is fine no March speed, speed on here unfortunately we do have retaliatory though which is nice it says 1.5 percent extra counterattack damage which is perfect synergy for my Herald anyway spiked gives me two and a half percent extra attack and resistant gives me 1.5 percent extra counterattack damage so boom boom we have three percent bonus counterattack damage again great synergy for Herald overall definitely my worst of the armaments Ooh, we just got a formation choice chest let's open it for the video to see if that will change anything three two one the armament system is the worst system I couldn't come up with a worse system than the armament system if I tried absolutely horrible the fact that it's been in this state for months is embarrassing as for what's next for the account you can see that I still have 1067 legendary commander sculptures which is really nice uh, again most of these are going to go right into Zugliang as soon as I spin all of his wheels assuming that what we know about him is true we obviously don't know for sure but again more than likely a majority of these are going to go into him and then the commander I work on after that I have no idea but that means that I probably going to be working on dropping one of my infantry armies that is my current thinking I'll probably run two infantry two archer one cavalry which is very unconventional right now given the meta 
but I think that what we know about Zugliang, if that is true, I think what most likely will happen is people will run Boudica with Zugliang, and then probably Nebu YSG will be a great way to get YSG out into the open field. And will that be better than my Herald Alex? Depends probably on armaments and equipment. But it's easy to build a budget build for archers because you have the revival set. The other option is let's say, you know, I do go all in on Zugliang and I just drop YSG entirely and decide to do two infantry, two cavalry. Then I would be focusing all of these on a Zhang Yu, which I think Zhang Yu is basically all, I mean, he's exceptionally good. Don't get me wrong, but he could be power crept out of the game any day now, considering that he is quite old as far as the meta goes. I don't know if I want to necessarily do that. So we'll just have to see, but I just figured I would throw this in at the end of the video. So you guys kind of know what my forward projections and thinking is for right now and what I'm doing to save and plan for that. We also obviously have a new civilization. We have Greece coming into the game during the summertime, and that might change things that might make infantry even stronger if it is an infantry civ. So I may want to stay with three infantry marches. So who knows, but that's my current line of thinking. Anyway, guys, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I really hope you will consider dropping a thumbs on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube al algorithm. So other rise of kingdoms players might see it. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your thoughts on my five marches. Is there anything that I should change? I'm always open to suggestions. As long as you're not rude, what is with people and being rude in the comment section? I just delete it. I just delete it. If people are annoying or stupid, I just delete it. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omni Arc. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.